Hi, this is John with SysEng Quick. Today I'll be showing you how to do remote development in a Docker container with VS Code. Rather than check out code locally on my laptop, I use a dedicated Linux host. Most of my work is deployed to Linux servers or containers. And because I work on multiple projects, this host isn't configured the same as the deployment targets. This is where dev containers come in. I can connect to a specialized Docker container, ensuring the required tools and libraries are available without having to install or configure anything on my dev host or laptop. To start, let's make sure we have the required extensions. We'll need dev containers, and since I'm running Docker on a remote host, I'll need the remote SSH extension as well. Let's select the extensions icon from the primary sidebar. We'll search for dev container, select the extension from Microsoft, and click the blue install icon if it isn't already installed. We'll do the same thing for the remote SSH extension. Click the extension, click the blue install button. Although other Docker-like systems such as Podman may work, I will only be covering Docker in this tutorial. Let's install Docker on this new Debian Bookworm system. Consult the Docker website for instructions if you are using another platform. The first thing they want us to do is update the package repo, so let's go ahead and do that. Next, it wants us to install the CA certificates and curl packages. It wants us to make sure we have the Etsy apt key range directory, where we're going to download the Docker key file. Then we're going to make sure that key file is world readable. Now we'll go ahead and add the Docker repository to apt. And we'll do a final apt get update to get things from our new repository. Next, we need to install the Docker packages. Let's go ahead and copy all the Docker packages to install, and we'll say yes to this. Now that Docker is installed, let's test and make sure it works. We'll do this sudo docker run hello world. There we go, we have Docker installed. Back in VS Code, let's connect to our new Debian host. Select the Remote Explorer icon from the primary sidebar. Make sure Remotes Tunnels SSH is selected from the Remote Explorer dropdown. These list entries here come from your SSH config. You can edit this directly within VS Code by clicking the gear icon next to the SSH section and selecting your SSH config from the dropdown. It should be the first option. I've already added the host Debian 12 in mine. Now I will click the arrow next to the Debian 12 host to connect the current window to this remote host. I've already set up SSH key authentication, but if you have a password, it will be prompted for by VS Code, possibly more than once depending on your SSH config. If this were a real project, I'd probably start by cloning the Git repo and opening that folder in VS Code. For this tutorial, let's just create a folder, Project 1, and open that instead. We'll go ahead and tell VS Code that yes, I trust the authors, because I am the authors. Maximize the window, and we're ready to create our initial dev container configuration. Open the command palette with Control shift p or Command-Shift-P on macOS, search for Dev Container, and select Add Dev Container Configuration Files. I'm going to search for Alpine, select version 3.19. I don't want any additional features, so I'll click OK. We'll be changing the container later, so don't be too concerned over these initial selections. This is just for VS Code to generate some boilerplate we can customize. This step isn't strictly necessary, and you can create the configs by hand if you prefer. 
I usually copy a working config from another project and customize it. Let's try to open the workspace inside our new dev container. Open the command palette with Control Shift P or Command Shift P on Mac OS and search for dev container. Select reopen in container. If you get an error like this, it means your user cannot run Docker without root. We can fix this by adding our user to the Docker group. Be aware that this is a potential security issue. Please read the documentation before changing this setting and be sure you understand the implications of this change. I'm going to hit the cancel button, open up the terminal, and I'm going to run sudo gpasswd-a dollar sign open paren id dash un close paren docker. This will add my current user to the docker group, which was created by the docker repo packages we installed on Debian. We'll need to reconnect to the host after making this change. You can see if I run groups, I'm not in the Docker group yet. If you are using SSH connection multiplexing, make sure you end all SSH sessions or your group membership may not be reflected. Let's go ahead and select File, Close Remote Connection, File, Close Window. Same thing for our other VS Code window, File, Close Remote Connection, File, Close Window. And then let's go back and open VS Code and let's reopen a connection to our server. I'll go to Remote Explorer, Project 1, and click the arrow to connect to this folder on my dev host. Let's open a new terminal. And are we in the right group? No, we are still not. If you have problems like this, it may be because of the VS Code server. Let's go ahead and do File close remote connection and let's go back to my terminal. Let's do ps aux pipe that to grip code. There are lots of VS code processes still running. Let's just do pkill dash u dollar sign open paren id un close paren. This should kill everything running as my proxmox user on this server. Obviously, be careful when running that if you don't understand what it's doing. Another option is just to reboot the server. Let's go back into VS Code. And one more time to Remote Explorer, Project 1. And if I do Groups, yes, we are now in the Docker group. Let's try to reopen this folder in our new dev container again. When you first open a folder, it will bring up this pop-up that prompts you to reopen the container. Or you can open the command palette again and do reopen a container. They both do the same thing. Now it will work. The first time you build a container, it may take some time to download and install the correct things. You can click on this to show the log and see what it's doing. It's mostly installing a bunch of things from the Microsoft Dev Containers Alpine 319 repo. After about a minute, we are connected. If I press plus over here, we'll get a new terminal. And yes, we are in our new Docker container. I am now the VS Code user rather than the Proxmox user that I was. And I'm in Workspaces Project 1 rather than just Project 1 where I was in my home directory. The dev container extension configures a lot out of the box. It added my laptop's git config and mounted the workspace folder we opened in the container. Let's open the configuration in devcontainer.json. At the bottom left, you can see we're editing on dev container Alpine on the Debian 12 server. That name comes from the name property in devcontainer.json. We can change that to something more meaningful. The image property is where you define your Docker image. It's set to the Microsoft Alpine 319 image we selected when we initialized our configuration. I'm not going to cover features, but they're very useful. I highly recommend you go read the documentation on this link. Forward ports is a method of automatically forwarding specific ports from your container 
back to the host. Very useful when one of your containers is running a server such as Postgres. The post create command allows you to specify a command to run the first time the container is created. This can be very useful when you need to do something inside the container that cannot be done during the image creation process. For example, something that might need access to your workspace files. Customization allows for dev container tools like dev containers VS code extension to specify additional configurations inside the dev container JSON file. One useful customization is adding specific VS code extensions to your dev container environment automatically. The remote user property allows dev container to override a user's UID and GID with the values of the user who opened the dev container. This will allow you to edit files that are mounted from your local file system into the container as your local user. You'll have the same permissions and nothing will be created or owned by root, which can cause problems later when trying to interact with those files locally. Let's change the Docker image. I'd like to do some Ansible development in this workspace. Ansible does not publish any Docker images that I know of, so let's use the Python image from Docker Hub instead. I'll change the image property to be Python, and then the tag is going to be 3.12, the Python version I want to use. We'll save this file. I'll open the command palette with Control Shift P or Command Shift P on a Mac, and I'll say Rebuild Container. Now that the container has been built, we can open up a new terminal and we'll see we're in a new container. You'll notice our prompt has changed. We're no longer the VS Code user, but do we have Python? Yes, we have Python 3.12. Without a Docker image tailored for this project, the environment won't be very consistent. Whenever someone builds the container, they would have to install Ansible and possibly other Python libraries and development tools. Let's replace the Docker image with a Docker file. First, we'll comment out the image property and we'll replace it with a build object property. Inside the build object, we need the Docker file property, which will reference our Docker file. Let's go ahead and save that. I have made a Docker file. It's very basic. It simply takes our Python 3.12 image and adds Ansible Core, Ansible Lint, and the FQDN Python package. Let's open the command palette with Control Shift P or on Mac OS, Command Shift P, and let's rebuild the container. Now that my new container is up, let's open a terminal. And do I have Ansible? Yes, I do. What about Ansible Lint? Again, yes. So now we have a more tailored image for this project. When I create new files in the workspace, they are owned by the root user rather than my local user. This can lead to problems if I need to change them outside the container later because my user will not have any permission to edit those files. To fix this, Let's configure dev container to update the UID and GID of the container's non-root user to match our local user's configuration. We can do this with the remote user property. Let's uncomment that, place a comma after the build section, and change root to the value of the non-root user inside the Docker image. It is often called VS Code. That's what I've used here. If your container does not provide a non-root user, such as the Python image, you can add it in the Docker file. I've modified the Docker file to create a non-root user named VS Code. Let's go ahead and rebuild the container. We can open a new terminal and you can see I am now the VS Code user, but this file is owned by root. This file is owned by VS Code. Is that the right user? If we go back to our other window, we can see, yes, it's actually owned by my Proxmox user. 
That's because the UID and GID was configured by dev container to match my local Proxbox user, despite the fact the username has not changed. Let's auto install some VS Code extensions into our dev container. Since we're doing Ansible development, that seems like a good extension to add. We'll uncomment customizations. Inside this object, let's add a VS Code object. And inside that, we'll need an extensions array. We'll need to find the extension ID to add to the array. Select the extensions icon from the primary sidebar. Search for your extension, in this case, Ansible. Select the extension from the list. Click the gear icon and click copy extension ID. Now we'll paste this into our extensions list. We'll go ahead and hit save and let's rebuild the container. You can see that the Ansible extension and a few of its dependencies were installed into this container automatically. Ansible projects often have dependencies listed in files that aren't available during image creation. We can fix that with post-create command. Let's uncomment the post-create command property and we'll replace uname-a with the command you want to run. If you need to run multiple commands, you can place them into a script and run that instead. The command uses your workspace folder for the working directory. Let's replace this command with our galaxy.sh script in the .dev container folder. Make sure the script is executable or add an interpreter such as bin sh before the script path. We'll go ahead and save this and then we can rebuild the container. As soon as the container starts up, we get a new terminal output running the post create command from devcontainer.json and the output of this command. Let's see how it might work using Docker Compose. Here is a Docker Compose file, which builds our container from the Docker file. It also forwards our SSH agent into the container. We've configured our workspace mount here because we might have more than one container. Let's comment out the build object in devcontainer.json and we'll replace it with docker compose file and the path to docker compose.yaml. We need to add the service property, which tells devcontainer which docker compose service to attach. We only created one and it's called devcontainer. The workspace folder cannot be inferred when using docker compose so we need to add a property for that as well. It's slash workspaces project one, matching what we have in the Docker Compose file. Finally, we need to keep our container from exiting prematurely. So let's replace the default command with something dev container creates. To do this, we'll add override command true. Now let's rebuild the container. It looks pretty much like it did before, but if we open a new terminal, do we have our SSH auth sock variable? We do. Does it work? It does. That concludes this tutorial on VS Code dev containers. I hope it has been helpful. If so, please hit those like and subscribe buttons. Thanks for watching.